Yeah, it's 2 a.m. Karbala time. Salaamu alaykum everybody and welcome to hashtag LNT. Uh, now, I hope everyone had a nice iftar. I had for myself, I had some deadly grilled chicken, uh, which was good, inshallah. You know, but for the guys in the U.S., you guys are still fasting. You guys have about, an, what, another two hours? An hour and a bit, two hours until you break your fast, inshallah, you break it good. But anyways, tonight is episode 10 of hashtag LNT. So that means we had an awesome nine nights, an awesome nice nine episodes uh, of this very beautiful show with this very beautiful man coming to you from the holy city of Karbala live on this exclusive Ramadan series with the one and only Ahmed Ali. Now, let's kick off the 10th episode right with what's trending. And we'll be back very shortly. Once again, assalamu alaikum everybody for joining us tonight. Now, for um, for tonight, we're going to kick it off with something very um, sad. It hit one of my home cities in Canada, um, well, near my home city in Canada, Mississauga. Um, a, a manhunt um, is on in Canada after uh, two men detonated uh, an improvised um, bomb, explosive device. And it's sad to see how people, even in the most peaceful cities or most peaceful countries in the world, Canada, um, you know, we, we, we see that kind of stuff. I mean, come on, guys. We're in the 21st century. We don't need that kind of stuff. But police uh, said that there's no indication that it's a terrorist attack or a hate crime. Um, as the, at this time, we haven't ruled anything out um, as we start our investigation. Uh, but surveillance, surveillance photos actually show um, Two men walking in with the uh, black hoodies. Um, I think they're imitating Death Wish, the movie, uh, where he just goes and kills around people. But these guys are crazy. Why would they do that? It's Ramadan, guys. It's Ramadan. Why would you go and do that? Anyways, uh, but, you know, the, the, there were two parties going on, uh, a birthday celebration. Um, and um, we, don't, we really don't need that um, in anywhere around the world, especially in Canada. But anyways, what else is trending? This is shocking, actually. Um, for the first time, North Korea has destroyed its only nuclear testing sites. Why, you may ask? Just to prove that they're, uh, you know, that they want peace going on in the world right now. Let's take a, a look at the video shot by RT. Wow. Wow, so everything is done. I mean, Kim Jong-un wishes to see Donald Trump when he does that. Like, he just wants Donald Trump to meet him uh, when, when someone does that. Well, anyways, um, so the, 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 they're, they're, they're trying to prove that North Korea right now is peaceful without any nuclear weapons. Uh, so this crazy chubby guy isn't going to kill anyone, kill anyone with his uh, nuclear weapons. But... They're saying that the summit in Singapore might still be on. So yesterday's What's Trending may be turning upside down. Anyways, let's go and jump into tonight's topic, but after this very quick break. Now, when we use the title father or mother of anything or, any, or, or someone or... Um, any individual, we mean it to be a person who has a high status that initiated or had a great impact on a specific family, a specific community or society, or a specific place. Now, for example, we have George Washington, who is called the father of the United States. Now, what decides that this individual, George Washington, is called the father of the United States? Well, for his brave leadership um, of the Continental Army. And um, he planned the military strategy to win the Revolutionary War. Now, there would be no United States if it wasn't for his military genius. And of course, I mean, the, 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 the government set out in the constitutional, uh, or the constitution would not have succeeded if it wasn't for George Washington. And the example he set as the first president, now, the question also rises, could there be more than one father um, for any place or, for, any, or, or for, for a country? Well, alongside Washington, we have James Adam, Thomas and Jefferson, the founding fathers, James Morrison, um, James Mo uh, Monroe, 
and uh, Alexander Hamilton, and then we have Benjamin Franklin. So only George Washington was the one that held the title or that special title, founding father of the United States. But let's go back in history. Now, not too far, just a little bit, 1400 years ago. Um, more than that, more than that, just a little bit. But ever since the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, um, there has been a misinterpretation um, regarding the verse in Al Ahzab chapter uh, 33, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, verse 6 of chapter 33, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The Prophet is more worthy of the believers than themselves, and his wives are in the position of their mothers. So, just to explain this verse, the Prophet is more worthy, that's self explanatory, but his wives are the mothers of the believers, is what the verse is trying to say. Now, is it safe to say that all the Prophet's wives were the mothers of the believers or were there specific ones or was there a specific one? Now tonight, hashtag al and his crew and Mu'a Ahmad Ali is trying to find out who is the mother of all believers. That's what we're trying to find out tonight. Who is the mother of all believers? Now, you can pick up the phone right now, open WhatsApp and dial this number shown right now. Plus 964-774-067-1836. Call us via WhatsApp. Send us a voice message, a text message, a video on there. Um, you can also go uh, check our live feed on Facebook as we are live there. So every comment you write there. And anyone that participates via phone call, uh, via WhatsApp, of course, um, send us a, a, a voice message or a text message. Your name will be written down on these sticky notes right here and placed in this fishbowl right here. So your name's may be, uh, or your names that are in here, uh, can be drawn at the end of Ramadan for a chance to win a free trip to Karbala. Free trip, we're bringing you guys to Karbala. Free on our house at the end of Ramadan. We'll do that draw. But um, let's take a very short break and we'll be back very, very short. Once again, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Tonight, um, if you wonder why I'm wearing black, you get to find out very soon. But um, before the break, we were talking about, or we asked the question, who is the mother of all believers? And this is very important for tonight. Now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, and before that, we do advise everyone to call in and participate in tonight's episode uh, so you guys can have a chance to win a free trip to Karbala, along with many, many giveaways that were given out this Ramadan. Now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny, says, Ali and I are the fathers of this ummah, of this nation. So when the Prophet says that he and Ali are the fathers of this nation, it means that his wives are the mothers of the believers. Now let's go back a little bit to the verse I mentioned a few minutes ago. Remember that? The Prophet is more worthy uh, than the believers themselves and his wives are the mothers um, of the believers. And I asked the question, are all the wives considered to be the mothers of the believers? Now then, to be a mother of the believer, this is a very high status. I mean, for, uh, you know, the, uh, for a person to be called a father is different than to be called a dad. For a, a, a mother to be called a mom is different than to be called a mother. You know, although it's, it's a short form, but it's different when, you, when we analyze that. For, a, for a, an individual, a female, to be called the mother of all believers, that's a high status. Not any woman can hold this status, especially within the religion of Islam, meaning that she has to be the most noble, purest, obedient, devout, and, and then she can be the mother uh, of the believers in the world. However, there were some of the wives of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, um, who were considered, or th they had that reputation of them abusing Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And as we know, 
whoever abuses Prophet Muhammad, something bad's gonna happen to him. This is this is not a good sign if you're abusing the Prophet, especially at the verse I'm gonna mention right now. And if you're wondering who am I talking about, uh, the wives, you can go back to history and check it out. Two wives uh, abused Prophet Muhammad. We don't need to get into um, you know sectarian issues, but you can go check out history as it mentions who and who. Uh, abuse Prophet Muhammad. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in chapter 33 verse 57 Al-Ahzab he says indeed those who have abused Allah and His Messenger Allah has cursed them in this world and the hereafter and prepared for them a humiliating punishment. A lot of people might say that this verse uh, was for the people that um, uh, abused Prophet Muhammad during his uh, before or, or after his message when they were throwing garbage at him and, and things but uh, we'll get to analyze this a bit more when we get into detail but we just have received a call from Muntadar from the United States Salamu Alaikum Muntadar welcome to Hashtag LNT and tonight we're asking the question who is the mother of all believers? Hello Hello Salamu Alaikum Muntadar, can you hear me? Hello? Muntadar, can you hear me? Okay, maybe there's a technical difficulty. Uh, Hello, yes, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? All right, maybe there's a technical difficulty going on. Do try again uh, to call in. But uh, before that, I, we were talking about a... a the, the, the verse that was saying that whoever abuses the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and technically when you abuse the Prophet, you're abusing Allah, um, so you're abusing both at the same time. Um, so basically what this means that there's a punishment for those who abuse Allah. And before we continue, just let, let, let's just remind everyone to call in, so pick up your iPhones, your Androids, your Huawei's, your OnePlus 6's, um, your Sunnies, your whatever's, um, and, and, and open WhatsApp. Dial this number shown at the bottom right there, plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six. Change and call us. Send us a voice message or a text message at uh, or via WhatsApp uh, for your name to be placed in this ball right here for a chance to win a free trip to Karbala. Now, let's go back and talk about this very interesting topic that we're talking about today. Who is the mother of all believers? We were talking about those who are abusing the Prophet. Now. If you open the Quran to chapter at tahrim verses 3, you'll find out and you'll read the Quranic verse which says, and remember, when the Prophet confided uh, to one of his wives a statement. So the Prophet told one of his wives a secret. And then she went to inform another person. Allah showed the Prophet uh, of uh, her sin. Um, but before I continue this, let's take... Uh, Although we're reading the Quran, we can't cut it, but let's, we have Muntadar back on the line. Assalamu alaikum Muntadar, welcome to Hashtag LNT once again. Uh, and uh, tonight. Assalamu wa rahmatullah, tonight's Ramadan Kareem, Ram and I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you very much, Ramadan Kareem to you as well. Um, and tonight's question, who is the mother of all believers? Of course, uh, our is the, the Khadija Al-Kubra, sallallahu alayha. Oh. Uh, which are uh, we are in uh, the uh, uh, the uh, death of her uh, uh, her eminent, and uh, the reason why uh, the Khadija al Kubra is the uh, mother of all believers is she sacrificed her wealth and her uh, and her um, her time and everything uh, to, towards uh, the uh, religion of Islam, which was uh, the uh, it was a new religion uh, over the um, uh, brutality of uh, Quraysh, and uh, her uh, her uh, persistent and her uh, her assist to the. Uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam uh, made her an icon in the uh, in the uh, the Muslim uh, uh, history. Mm -hmm. So as we uh, distinguish that uh, uh, Khadija al-Kubra is the mother of believers, that's why uh, we see through the history what the this mother of all believers 
uh, did uh, to uh, rise Islam and spread Islam to all over the world. And uh, she was and her uh, and Imam Ali alayhi salam, one of the founders and uh, essential founders to make Islam spread through uh, the worldwide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, for joining us tonight and very um, good answer you gave us right there. Hopefully, inshallah, um, you can, um, uh, re we wrote his name down on the slip right here. Muntadar, let's get this camera on. So Muntadar, um, because of the, the, the light, you probably can't see it, but your name is on this paper. Um, and inshallah, it's going into the bowl for a chance to win. Let's shake up this bowl a little bit um, for a chance to win a free ziyarat to Karbala. Now, um, we do thank Muntadar once again and for, for those who are trying to call in right now. Uh, but as you were mentioning early on, chapter at tahrim verses 3, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that the Prophet told his wife, one of his wives, a secret, and she wanted to tell someone else. Now the Prophet showed him that, showed him his wife telling another, uh, another person of, of his secret. Now the Prophet, uh, the, the Prophet at that moment ignored it, but when she came back, he told her that, who did you go and tell and why did you tell him? Um, now, she asked him, who told you this? How did you know? And the Prophet said, I was informed by the all-knowing the Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so at that moment, we can find out a bit of, you know, a bit of shakiness within that wife. But anyways, now, on to the next verse. If the two wives, listen to this verse. If you two wives repent to Allah, it is best, for your hearts have deviated. But if you cooperate against Him, then indeed Allah is the protector and Jibra'il and the righteous of the believers and the angels moreover are his assistants. Now, tell me from the wives of Prophet Muhammad, who were the ones that the Quran is talking about? Who are the two wives? I'm not going to mention any names. Tonight, we're, we're not trying to mention any names. Of course, of, of those who, you know, abuse the Prophet, well, what we're trying to say, go through history and you'll find out who abused the Prophet and who this verse is talking about, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. So this is chapter uh, Al-Tahreem verses 4. The one before that was for verse 3. This is verse 4 talking about the wives. Now, let's stop here for a sec and think about who whose hearts were deviated and then we'll move on. Now, if we were to continue to the next verse, chapter Al-Tahreem verses 5. We'll also find another verse saying that perhaps his Lord, so continuation, he says, perhaps his Lord, if he divorced you all, the two meaning, would substitute for him wives better than you, submitting, believing, devoutly obedient, repentant, worshipping, and ones who are virgins. We don't, we're not trying to get into any you know, political issues or religious issues, but this verse clearly says uh, says it all. But before we continue, let's take a, let's take this call from Uthman from the United States. Okay, Salamu alaikum, Uthman. Welcome to hashtag LNT episode ten. And tonight, uh, our question for you is: Who is the mother yes. of all believers? First of all, Ramadan Kareem on you guys. Ramadan Kareem to you as well. as Thank you. as alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. The mother of all believers is Aisha, the, pro the Prophet's wife. Mm -hmm. Because Aisha radiallahu anha helped the Prophet. She helped him always with when he's sick. She helped him uh, calm in the wars and all that stuff. So the mother of all believers insha'Allah would be Aisha radiallahu anha because she is the truly, she truly sacrificed her whole body for the sake of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. You're inshallah, laughing. inshallah. But there is no proving wrong for the truth, Akhwan, uh -huh. brothers. Okay, so... Uh, no, but but inshallah at the end of the episode, uh, hashtag LNT will prove that wrong because tonight we're trying to find out 
um, who the mother of all believers is. Now, um, we're, we're not trying to get into an argument, but thank you very much, Uthman, for joining us tonight. I don't know if do you want your name into the bowl so you can come to Karbala. Maybe you can change your mind about who the mother of all believers is. <laughs> but as, as we mentioned, everyone gets to participate. Uthman, USA. All right. Uthman, your name is going into the bowl. If you do win, that means Allah wants to, uh, to bring you back to the right path. <laughs> wants to guide you. But anyways, um, let's continue the, the, the episode for tonight. Uh, but, uh, wow, Aisha, the mother of all believers. We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. All right. Now, uh, earlier on, we mentioned how there are characteristics of the ideal woman, of the ideal mother of all believers. Um, and we, we were mentioning before that call, uh, and I hope um, that Uthman and those who do believe in such an ideology, we respect that. For me, I respect that. But you can go check through history, check through the Quran, uh, and answer this question for us. Um, we can probably talk about it a bit later on. Uh, but we, tell me who the two wives are, and then we can get to um, who Allah is threatening in this verse. Threatening them, telling them, if you don't you know, walk right, and if you continue cooperating against the Prophet, then the Prophet will divorce you both, and he will replace you with wives who are submitting to Allah, believing, devoutly obedient, repentant, worshipping, and who are virgins. All right, we don't want to get into other stuff. Anyways, now, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, says the traits of an ideal wife of the Prophet. An ideal wife, an ideal mother of all believers. Who was the only wife that possess, possessed such features? We got a few answers, but let's go check out what the public has to say uh, about, we don't, technical difficulties inshallah, uh, maybe it can get resolved. Uh, but, uh, who was the only wife that possessed such features? Now, if, if we were to go and analyze all the wives, we need an, a, an episode for each wife. But, if we were to just summarize one individual who Muntadar actually gave us a bit of information about, um, not just mentioning random things, um, giving us a bit of information, telling us how this individual is actually among the greatest women of Islam. This is actually a, a series. You can go watch it on YouTube, The Great Women of Islam, presented uh, by Rana Hamid. You can go check it out on there. But uh, for tonight, the greatest woman in history, the greatest women of Islam. We have Asiya, the daughter of Muzahim. We have uh, wife's, uh, Pharaoh's wife. We have Maryam, the Virgin Mary. We have Fatima, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad. And of course, we have her mother, Khadija. Uh, now, this is very beautiful. This is very beautiful. The mother of a believer should be among this list right here, no? If you think otherwise, give me a call right now at hashtag Galantia plus 964 774 067 1836 and let me know if I'm wrong. Uthman, I'm, I'm not trying to answer you, I'm not trying to debate. But is Aisha mentioned in these? I, for, me, for me tonight, I didn't want to mention her names. But is she mentioned in the greatest woman in history? I don't see her name written here. And to those who do believe in that, change can. So, let's go take, right now we have, we, we, we talked about who, um, or we gave a little hint of who the mother of our believers is, but let's go and ask the expert so we can find out who actually is the mother of our believers. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين The Quran tells us about Rasulullah and his relationship to the believers and it tells us about his wives Regarding Rasulullah 
ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن خاتم النبيين He was not the father of any of you Rather he was the last of the messengers And in other verse وَنِسَاؤُهُ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ And his wives are your mothers That is why traditionally the wives of Rasulullah are called Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, Ummu al-Mu'mineen. Out of respect for the righteous wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are labeled as Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, Ummu al-Mu'mineen. Now, why, why this concept? Why does the Quran tell us that the uh, wives of Rasulullah are mothers of the believers? Well, number one, Rasulullah is the father. Rasulullah is the father of all the believers. So if he's the father, then that makes his wives the mothers. Two, the Quran is very careful in stating that no one is allowed to marry the wives of Rasulullah after him. Because some companions, some companions said that when we die, Rasulullah marries our, our wives and our women. And then he swore that if Rasulullah dies, I will marry one of his wives. And he mentioned his name. This verse was revealed. Ma kana lakum an tu'du Rasulullah. You cannot hurt Rasulullah with your words. And then, ummahatikum. This is a, in another verse. That his wives are your mothers. Would anyone be interested in marrying his own mother? Absolutely not. And a prime example of a mother of the believers was Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam, the first mother of the believers, the wife, the first wife of Rasulullah, this beloved, cherished wife of Rasulullah, who was compassionate, who was loving to Rasulullah, who was among the first to believe in Rasulullah, and to declare him as a prophet and to stand in support. And Rasulullah, Rasulullah would state, Ma nafa'ani malun qat kama nafa'ani malu Khadija. No money benefited me like the money of my wife Khadija. And another narration in which another wife of Rasulullah was upset when Rasulullah mentioned Khadija. Several times she told him, Ya Rasulullah, Allah has replaced you with better wives. He said, no, he has not replaced me with better wives. Nasaratni hainama khadalin in nas. She stood with me when others avoided me and neglected me. So Sayyidah Khadija alayhi salam was the first mother of the believers. She was the first of Ummahat al-Mu'mineen. She was a mother to all, of, to all of the companions and to all of the believers. May Allah bless her and bless her soul. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tahari. Welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sayyid Hassan Qazwini, for joining us tonight. Uh, and, and telling us who exactly was the mother of all believers. We are getting a few Facebook comments. Uh, we'll read them out uh, very quickly and we'll move on to finish our episode uh, for tonight. Now we have Hassan uh, H. Ali. He says, had it not been for Khadija's sacrifices, Islam would have not been established. Thank you very much, Hassan H. Ali. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Your name is going into the bowl. Uh, another comment we have Sayyidah uh, Shakila Abbas. He says, Salam uh, upon, okay, a mother of all believers. She says, Salam to Khadija. Okay, participate and then we can put your name, inshallah. Now, Fawziya uh, Faizi. Salam, brother. Indeed, it was Bibi Khadija who was the icon to uplift the religion of Islam and who stood by Prophet Muhammad like a strong pillar. Thank you very much, Fawzia, uh, for participating tonight. All right. Fawzia, 
your name is going into the bowl uh, as well. Uh, we are getting a few uh, another Facebook comments, but we'll get to uh, talk about them or uh, we'll get to write them down later on, inshallah. Now, um, just to conclude tonight's episode and just to carry on with what Sayyid Hassan Qazbini said to us tonight. Now, if it wasn't for the sacrifices of an individual, you know, for, for a mother, you know, of, of any ordinary family, let's just look at it from an ordinary family. If a mother within an ordinary family, she sacrifices everything she has, her comfort, his, her sleep, her wealth, everything for her children. Similarly, Khadija sacrificed her wealth, sacrificed everything she had. The women of Mecca did not talk to her. They, they exiled her. No, no, no one was willing to actually go to her house and check up on her. That's why when she gave birth, she was alone. When she gave birth to Fatima Zahra, she was alone. No woman talked to her. Yet, she bared that in and she still continued supporting the Prophet. So at the end of the day, it's safe to say that the woman who sacrificed the most for her children, the believers, was Khadija. And that's why the, this perfect title is placed on this perfect lady called Khadija. And this is it for tonight. I mean, if it wasn't for Khadija, the sword of Abu Talib and the piety of, and the, uh, piety of Abu Talib, there would not be no Islam. So thank you very much. You got us from Al Hashtag Al Anti with your Moa Ahmad Ali. And uh, do stay tuned for the upcoming episodes 2 a.m. Karbala time, 12 a.m. London time, 7 p.m. DC time. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.